Hello everyone and welcome back to the Common Sense Crypto Channel. As with you always, this is Rich doing another video today on XRP. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day today wherever you are in this great, great world. We're going to talk about XRP. And I got to start with this from Smoke. He says the bottom is in. But I'm not so sure of that. There's way too much uncertainty going on around the world right now. And everybody tries to call the bottom in this market. But nobody knows for sure what's going to happen next. Smoke does great research though. He finds those hidden gems that are out there around Ripple and XRP. But I think he might be wrong on this. Let's wait and see how it all plays out. Congressman French Hill would pick Hester Pierce for the next SEC chair. Remember Hester Pierce? They used to call her Crypto Mom. I think that narrative ended a while ago. And you know, honestly, I just want to see Gary gone. I don't care who replaces him at this point. Nothing can be worse than what we have right now, in my opinion. This comes from Eleanor Tourette. Kind of interesting that Rokana, who seemed to be trying to be the face of pro-crypto Democrats, wasn't among the 21 Dems who voted to pass the joint resolution to nullify the SEC Gov's SAB 121 back in May. I think Ro Khanna is just playing the role of being pro-crypto. I don't think any of these people are actually pro-crypto. Most of them don't even understand crypto. So honestly, it's like one big charade that they're trying to pull right now. This also comes from Eleanor Tourette. The Biden-Harris admin could demote Gary Gensler today if they really wanted to. Biden has the power to designate another commissioner as chair, and it would take effect immediately without the approval of Congress. Gensler would still be on the commission, just not the chair. So if these people are so pro-crypto all of a sudden, why don't they demote Gary Gensler? Why don't they just go in there and say, listen, Gary, you suck at your job and we're going to demote you down? No, they don't do that because deep down, they still want to crush crypto for the sake of the big banks. Because the big banks are making these people rich. You know, they go into office with nothing. They get $400,000 a year and they leave with millions of dollars. Same thing in Congress. Getting $200,000 a year and leaving multi-millionaires. There's something wrong because the system is broken. Crypto is booming again in New York as sediment turns positive. XRP. So what's going on? It looks like a shift is happening in New York. Out in Silicon Valley, they're turning their attention to AI, the latest hot sector. Meanwhile, in New York, things look like they're picking up around crypto. And, you know, New York could easily turn into a major crypto hub. But they're still held back due to the lack of regulations. Panama. Now the Switzerland of Latin America. And look at who's wh why it's happening there. You see Citibank, HSBC, Banco Santander, all Ripple partners working to push crypto in Panama. And again, you see how fast it happens. They all of a sudden emerge into an innovation hub. And they're going to outpace the United States. That's why it's so important for the United States to start turning pro-crypto before time runs out. But I do believe that everybody in Washington, and I mean everybody, is pushing towards stablecoin regulations. You know why? Because that's the path to a digital dollar. They all want the same thing. They want a CBDC. And I think that's what we're going to get first. Later, they'll work on crypto regulations. This comes from Wrath of Common. Project Picks Trial. 
is a joint BIS and Bank of England project exploring how tech can monitor the balance sheets of asset-backed stablecoins, noting the growing role of stablecoins. They mention Ripple's upcoming RLUSD in the presentation along with some others. What is interesting to note, aside from Ripple's prior engagement with the Bank of England, is that the BIS is fine mentioning an unreleased Ripple stablecoin, as if it's presumably already respectable project of some impact. I attribute it to their coherent, coherent regulatory engagement. I think the reason the BIS mentioned it is because the BIS has been working with Ripple for years. You know, the, the BIS would not be able to push ahead without RippleNet technology and without XRP. The BIS is fast-tracking. They don't even care if SWIFT gets left behind or not. They are ready for a new financial system. And they're, the reason that they're doing this is because they always tell you, the window is closing. The window of opportunity is closing. We must act now. We need to level the playing field now. And that's why I said the new financial system is closer than we think. When this man is moving into cash, pay attention. Probably quite good at using economic indicators to spot trouble. Having experienced the 1973-74 to 74 bear market. Black Monday, dot-com bubble, 2007 to 2009 financial crisis, and the 2020 pandemic. Warren Buffett. So why is he all of a sudden moving towards cash? I don't even want to cash my crypto out into cash because I think the U.S. dollar is not as strong as it used to be, and it's consistently getting weaker. Plus, the rise of inflation is still going on as well. What does Warren Buffett know that we don't know? That's the big question. Tokenization of the music industry with music NFTs. I really like the idea of this. So we know tokenization is going to happen. When it comes to music, I look at blockchain as a game changer. Because all of a sudden, an artist doesn't need to be signed to a record label. And there's a lot of music out there that's really great music, but it doesn't gather mainstream adoption. It ends up being like maybe a single somewhere out there on the internet. But, you know, there's a lot of great music out there. And if you took out the record labels, that music can become huge. It could become bigger than what you hear on the radio is what I'm telling you. So a real world asset, a token can be the direct or indirect representation of a traditional asset. For example, numerous musicians are currently publishing complete songs and albums as music NFTs are selling their fans NFT concert tickets. Think about it. Without the record industry, musicians can interact directly with their fans. And most likely, they would end up making a lot more money because they wouldn't have the record label in their pocket. A virtual item. A token can represent a piece of digital art, including a musician's album cover, poster, and show photographs. A collectible in the form of a musician's autograph a gaming skin, videos of virtual concerts or tracks. It actually opens up more possibilities as well. Vendors pay for use. So in other words, say you like one song. You don't have to buy an entire album. You could just buy that one song. We've seen that transition happen with music when it was being streamed. And even today with streaming of music. But this goes even beyond that. Public blockchains constitute sharing computing resources that must be allocated efficiently. A token is a perfect mechanism to meet a research consumption and prioritize important activities. Such tokens are known as gas tokens. For example, Bitcoin is the gas token of the Bitcoin blockchain, ETH for Ethereum, and so on. Without gas, our transaction costs a single user or small group of users 
could potentially overwhelm the blockchain, similar to a denial of service attack, making the blockchain unusable. But if people are making micropayments, we already know David Schwartz addressed that with the XRP ledger already. And if they pay for use using XRP, it costs a fraction of a penny, where with Ethereum, most of that money would go to gas fees. Same thing with Bitcoin. What I'm showing you here is this. Everything around us is eventually going to become a token. It's just a matter of time. And tokenization is just getting started. But it's going to improve industries, entire industries. It's going to be very disruptive when it happens. The good thing is a lot of that tokenization and a lot of those assets are going to end up on the XRP ledger, adding more value to XRP over time. But I just wanted to touch on that a bit because I think that is absolutely great. And I know that's the path forward for many industries, not just the music industry. Then there's this. Elon warns of civil war risk in the UK. If you look at what's going on over in UK right now, it's absolute chaos. And Elon Musk says civil war is inevitable. What's happening in the UK, you need to pay attention to it because I think it's coming to the United States after the elections. Right now, they want to keep everything contained. They want everything to look perfect going into the elections. It happens every single election year. Even gas prices have come down a little bit. Same thing with food prices. They have to make things look like they're doing a great job. But we all know better. And the same type of chaos I think is going to happen no matter who wins in the election. There is not going to be an actual clear winner. What it's going to be is chaos, no matter what. Because that's what they're all hoping for. And I think it's the same reason that you see these billionaires building bunkers. Because they know chaos is coming. What's your thoughts on that, though? Put it in the comments section down below. As far as I'm concerned, I look at everything like this. I'm going to get rich off XRP one way or another. And so are you if you don't sell too soon or panic sell. If you know what you're holding, you're going to get rich when all the dust settles. But until it happens, you got to stay patient, stay positive, and let's get rich together. With that said, I'm going to wrap up this video. I want to thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of you. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great night.